Hey, hi, hello creatives. Welcome back or to my channel. My name is Lindsay and today we are doing a live-ish video where I'm going to talk through it with you. Anyways, so um, this is going to be like my little announcement video of what's kind of been happening with me. And I'm also just going to start it off quickly with a little mini haul that I did for uh, Prime Day. Just very small, very small. I picked up a bathing suit that was on sale from $60 down to $20. And then I picked up more glue sticks because I like glue sticks as opposed to the tape runner. And then I just picked up some washi tape and that was it. But I'll show you the washi tape. I haven't opened it yet. Oh, really like these colors. They're very pretty. Really wanted a very muted, muted color. The only thing with getting washi tape off of Amazon is you really don't get that much. See, it's really not that thick. And compared to say a Archer and Olive, that's much thicker. So that's the only downfall, but what's good about Amazon is that it's pretty cheap for, like you get a, a pretty big variety. I wanna say this was around $11.99. I'll put it on screen what I actually paid for it, but, um, and then again in Canadian dollars. And then this one is very realistic. Well, I mean, the other one's realistic too, but this is just all, grid washi. Let's see. And more like earth tones. Just a bunch of grid washi. I use this very often and I run out really quickly. I'm happy to get a black. I didn't get a white, but there is a beige here, so that will definitely come in handy. And these ones I feel like actually have more on, definitely more on these than in that little package. There's definitely, it's you get definitely get more, but big fan, big fan of grid washi. I mean, I use it a lot. And now for what I've been working on. And the reason why I was trying to get this completely finished to tell you or to show you is because I have an announcement to make. And I did not completely finish this because this was a much bigger project than I anticipated. But nevertheless, this is a, as you can tell by the title of this video. This is my pregnancy slash baby slash toddler. This is my son's journal. And what this means is in this journal, it tracks, it tracked my pregnancy, it tracked my, you know, it has memory keeping and stuff in here and will even continue to have birthdays. But I only just started this this year, probably about uh, two months ago is how long I've kind of been working on it. But keeping in mind, my son was born in 2020. <laughs> so I was pregnant back in 2019. And then my son was born in 2020. So my son is already three and a half. <laughs> he was born in February. So uh, this has taken me a long time. And it is, you know, a long time coming. It's something that I've wanted to work on for so long. But one of the reasons why I wanted to have this completed is because I am currently pregnant with baby number two. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I can insert a couple photos here of me bumping. And yeah, so that's kind of why I've been more MIA recently is because my energy level just sucks. My motivation sucks. My, so I've, you know, been able to do my plan with me videos and get those out for you guys, but doing anything in between, I just, I mean, I get out of breath easily by just talking. I, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's, it's very fun. I, I do actually really enjoy being pregnant, 
but I'm six months now. I'm almost in my third trimester. The end of July will be my third trimester it's when I enter it. So pretty exciting stuff. And I do know the gender and I'll insert a couple photos here of my son kind of announcing it or taking pictures with our balloons and we are having a baby girl. So I'm very excited. Something that my mom has always mentioned is the is called the Million Dollar Family because we will now have one of each. We will now have a boy and a girl. And generally speaking, they like to have, or like, you know, old school wise, you know, it's nice to have the boy first to protect the girl. If you're old school like that, it doesn't really matter. But at the same time, I'm very, very, very happy to have a girl to now have one of each. Anyways, so this is Hudson's journal. So I didn't want to, at first I was going to do like a process video with these things, but I think I'm gonna do that for this baby, for being pregnant with this baby. So I do have another journal that I will show you at the end of this that I will actually be using for baby number two. But this is my Hudson pregnancy baby journal Hudson's journal, my child, my son, this is for him. This is not completely finished as I mentioned because this is a lot of a bigger project than I anticipated it to be, but nevertheless, the majority of it is here and you'll be able to get the gist of what like of what I tracked and, you know, the memory keeping that I did within here. It will kind of make sense. I'll show you as we as we go through. I have this left blank here because I am going to insert a picture. But for right now, it's blank because I don't know, I feel like I want to do like a baby picture. I don't know, because it's hard because it's pregnancy and baby, but it's like his whole journal. So like, do I just do an ultrasound photo? Do I do firstborn? Do I do, do I do little photos to kind of, you know, do it for each birthday? I'm not sure yet. That's probably why it's blank. Um, so I'm not sure if I believe there was one other video that I have posted that I kind of did a little bit of a story time, but actually Hudson was not my first pregnancy. I did have a miscarriage before, before Hudson, and I just wanted to kind of document it. So in here, this is an Archer and Olive folder from one of the subscription boxes, but in here, this is kind of just, you know, our uh, my journey to get to getting pregnant with with Hudson and just to kind of you know a little bit of the experience and what kind of happened through the miscarriage and that sort of thing to still kind of just document that pregnancy but you know for it to be not positive but for it to like look very nice but still with inside of my little journaling about that loss and then here is my pregnancy journey, just kind of jotted down, you know, my last period, you know, uh, the beginning part of the doctor's appointments, that sort of thing, like who we told, when I started to feel kicks and, you know, cl getting close to when I was, you know, starting to go into labor and that sort of thing. And then just different little little points of stuff that I kind of felt during that pregnancy. I can still add a little bit more if there's stuff that I remember, but that's the tricky part of about going back in time and kind of trying to document something from 2019 when it's 2023. But I still, I did do a lot of uh, note taking in my phone. So I wanted to, so I was able to kind of put that stuff here. Then I have an overview of the months that I was actually pregnant. I have, if you can see, closer as well. I have every other week that's highlighted in gray because it's to kind of, you know, and then along here you have the pink, which will indicate the amount of weeks I was pregnant at that point in time. So it's just nice to kind of be able to go back and see. And my mistake, I didn't mention that this is a Archer and Olive notebook, as you can see from the, as you saw from the beginning when I first opened it. And it is actually their eight and a half by 11 size notebook that was from one of the subscription boxes. So that's why it is so big. And you can see that the font is quite small. But I've only gone through right now and added in doctor's appointments and ultrasounds and that sort of stuff that I had. But I will go back in and you know, add in different events that happened, you know, the holidays, that sort of thing. But just a reminder, sorry, I get out of breath easily, as I told you. 
but a reminder to make sure you're drinking your water lots, 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 lots during the day because I know I absolutely need it. But anyway, so yes, this is our over. This is my overview. I'm able to kind of just put anything I want in here to highlight what happened that month while I was pregnant. Next was the positive test and telling family. So I just kind of, you know, put my thoughts and feelings over getting the positive test. And then I took the picture with the positive test and then the dates and stuff that we told people. And then when I, my grandparents were not back in their day, ultrasounds weren't really a thing. So when I, when they opened a box that had it had these two cups in it, but it had the ultrasound photo on top of it. And my grandma's like, what is this? <laughs> because they just didn't have that back then. And then I did a, you know, old wives tales, blue or pink for when I was pregnant with Hudson. And then I circled kind of how I was feeling during that time. I did a little tally. And then I even posted this on social media to kind of see what people thought. 61 people voted girl, 43 people <laughs> voted boy. But as you know, I had a boy. And then these are my appointments and notes. So as I go through, I mean, like I said, I did a lot of note taking and stuff on my phone and I actually did a lot of notes, which I can show you. So baby bean, I just, as you can kind of see, I went through and would write my OB, just different things, ortho OB, ultrasounds, that sort of thing. And I jotted down everything that kind of was said during that ultrasound or doctor's appointment. I've been doing that currently as well, but I just wanted to have a physical form of it, obviously. So I wrote kind of all of those things down. And I even looked at, I'm able to access my ultrasounds and stuff, my reports online. So I was able to kind of see more details. Um, of the, you know, of the report from the technicians and that sort of thing. So I was able to add those notes in here as well. Then I have my ultrasound photos where here in Canada, we have three different ultrasounds. We have the first one that is the dating scan. We have the second one that is at your 12 week scan. And then we have another that's at 20 weeks, which is the anatomy scan, which is where they literally measure everything. Um, so this is why you see there's three, I think there's three, October. Oh, no, this is October as well. Oh, August here. I took a picture of the picture. So your first, second, and then this was my third. And then I wrote down the heartbeat because I was something that you're never really told <laughs> until you're experiencing. So when I went through my my miscarriage, it was actually, um, I was about, I think seven and a half weeks pregnant. And then I started bleeding. And when I went to the hospital to get everything checked out, when they looked at stuff, there was actually no heartbeat. And my husband and I were in a little bit of denial and the doctor was not very pleasant. And she was saying, this is a doomed pregnancy. And um, yeah, wasn't being super nice and, and thoughtful with her words, but so we decided to actually wait one week to go back and there was of course still no heartbeat. So nobody really realizes, at least I never realized how important this heartbeat is until you go for an ultrasound and you don't have one. So if, you know, there's anyone out there that's watching this that have experienced that or your partner has experienced that, I am sorry, but you are not alone. And yeah, it, it's, it, I, I feel like it needs to be talked about more so that, you know, women know that they are not alone. It's not something that they've done to their themselves or the pregnant. It's, it's nothing that they could have avoided. It is nothing. It's something that our body decides and that's it. So, or the embryo just was not good. And yeah, so it's definitely way more common, but this is why you'll see here that I have the heartbeat in like big letters of each ultrasound because it was just so awesome to be able to see and, and hear that heartbeat every time we went for an ultrasound. Then here's just a big timeline. So the pregnancy app that I was using at the time, I think it was Pregnancy Plus, I went through and kind of <laughs> added in, um, you know, at each week how big the baby was. 
and I used an animal one. So you'll see that like bunny. So I am currently 23 weeks. On Wednesday, I'll be 24 weeks. So right now, my current baby is the size of a Maltese puppy. And as of Wednesday, she'll be the size of a bunny. And then again, there's just little things here of kind of, you know, how to how to look at it. So it's nice where you can kind of refer back to this timeline and then you can refer to this overview to kind of see, okay, you know, when I was 22 weeks in and around, where was it? And it was, you know, the third week of October. So that's, that's what I think is fun. And I like to document things. Obviously, this is what this whole book is about. And then I did a to-do list for the first, second, third. And then actually this said fourth, which I'm like, there's no four trimesters. <laughs> so I was very confused as to why I did a fourth. But I only recently just filled in these, these to-do lists. But then I changed this to hospital bag. So, but I remember what we kind of did and didn't do. And yeah. Really like that to-do list. And this is my bump progress. So I have August, September, October, November, December, January, and then in February. And then I went back, I added the dates that the picture was taken, and then I actually added like, you know, 18 weeks, three days, 24 weeks, three days. So I went in and just kind of added exactly how, how far along I was just to get more of an exact date. Then these are the different holidays that I had with my bump. There was the civic holiday here in Ontario. We celebrate a um, civic holiday in August. We have our Labor Day. Thanksgiving here in Canada is actually in October. Um, Halloween, Christmas, and then New Year's. This is my nursery renovations page for before and after. This page I actually really like. I have not filled it in just yet because I have somewhere in a happy planner somewhere I have like different budgeting and a to-do list and a list that we made you know when we were doing this when we were doing this nursery but I just haven't found it yet so this is why it's still kind of blank but as you can see what it kind of started out as was just a catch-all room and then this was our kitchen and our small space that we lived in the in an apartment or in a basement apartment, but it was a walkout basement, as you can see, so it wasn't really basement-like. And then, you know, this is kind of progress pictures, and then this was the finished project. And I just think that it, like, turned out so awesome. I loved his nursery, and I'm excited to do this page again, although it's going to look a little different, because this time around... Hudson and baby are going to be sharing a room, obviously not for the first few months because baby stays in, in, you know, our bedroom for the first little while, but they will be sharing a room. So it's definitely going to look a little different. This one I have also not completed just yet because this just seems very overwhelming to me at this point in time. And this is kind of backwards, but there's milestones in first. So, you know, my first positive test, when we heard the heartbeat, when I started to show, when we took our photos, first ultrasound, first doctor appointment, first craving, you know, first time I wore maternity clothes. And I can Google more of these things to kind of add here because again, most of the stuff I wrote down. So I'd be able to put you know, a lot of the information here. And then interesting facts are more like the prices of things, like the prices of diapers, the prices of formula, the prices of gas at the time. So I'd be able to kind of go back and Google things of what they were, you know, the top songs when he was born, um, you know, the different movies that kind of came out when he was born, any nicknames that we gave him. Um, what does this say? Oh, the car we drove, um, and then our name list, obviously. So this will be interesting to look back at it again. It's the opposite, but um, I really liked this, this page. Then our journey to you. This is something that is going to be a little bit of a big project to kind of go back into my old computer and find pictures from each year. But my husband and I started dating in 2009 and then we got engaged in 2016. We got married in 2017 and then Hudson was born in 2020. So I just thought it would be fun to, you know, our journey to you and have a couple photos from each year up until we have a picture of the three of us. This was our pregnancy announcement. I am a big Friends fan and we did a Friends themed. So we made, I got shirts made. 
I got the shirt, Can I Be Any Cuter, for a baby onesie. I ordered this picture frame from Etsy, which was actually an arm and a leg. Um, <laughs> it costed, I want to say, it was like $50 or $60 to order it. So don't judge me, but I did it for the photo. <laughs> and then this was actually a photo. There's actually a little deer back there. But anyways, yeah, so this was our... Um, announcement photo and we actually got a really close friend to take these photos instead of hiring a photographer just because it was a little cheaper and my husband and I are actually interested in photography so we have all of the equipment we just kind of posed and got him to take the photos so this was really fun then we had our gender reveal and this is our like us in front of the box picture of us we did a cake as a backup um, just something to have and then as you can see here, it is, sorry for the reflection, but it shows it's a boy, the giraffe. So that was really fun. That was, we were at a restaurant um, close to home and kind of rented out the whole like dining area. And we had lots of people there. We did a 50-50 draw. We did lots of things. And then here's my baby shower. I actually forgot to take photos really during the baby shower. There's a bunch of photos of me opening presents, but I forgot to actually take photos with people. But anyways, here's my best friend, my nephew, me as mom-to-be, my husband and I, and then this is my mom and myself. Then our maternity shoot. I am just obsessed with these photos. I didn't even write anything else other than just I am obsessed with the I am obsessed with these photos and like they're just I wasn't too thrilled to have to take uh my photos in the winter time because like with the snow and stuff but this dress that my photographer let me wear was just oh stunning stunning I love them I'm going to be using the same photographer for my maternity shoot this time around and yeah I I like I can't wait because like these are these are stunning. I'm so happy with how these all turned out. These are just more bump photos. I obviously took a lot of photos and I just wanted to kind of, you know, take them. I actually did a prenatal yoga class that this is where these are coming from. And it's just fun to slowly see bump get bigger and bigger and just more to kind of document because why not? And then this is now moving into kind of more like memory keeping stuff for, you know, throughout being pregnant. So my friend Leanna and Basil got married. So this was us at their wedding. This is during Halloween. This is a Halloween party. Then we went to go see a Leaf game. So that was fun. We have my, my last name, my maiden last name. Um, used to be Little. So this was the, you know, my dad's side family Christmas and took photos there then this is just christmas season this was my work christmas party that i went to super pregnant in november so i was you know seven months pregnant i think yep and i was one of the one last ones on the dance floor so that was fun we had a christmas party and this was you know all the photos from the christmas party this is and then these three photos are actually from Christmas. This is Christmas morning, opening presents with the family, and then this was at the end of the night. So I still have to do some journaling. As you can see, I have, you know, stuff here to, to still do some journaling that I haven't done yet, but I got, you know, most of the pages done. My nephew turned one January 1st, so that was fun. I felt absolutely huge here, but still fun, again, to document. And then... This was, I actually had surgery when I was pregnant with Hudson and in January I was off for about a month before he was born on sick leave. As you can see here, I have one, two, three little holes in me, in my belly there. And this is me just living on the couch for the week. My husband is there on the couch, just keeping me company with the dog. I don't know if you can see, but the dog is right here. Anyways, I thought that's kind of funny, but I had an ovarian torsion. So actually during my first pregnancy and then here, I actually had a cyst on my left ovary that started out at eight centimeters, then grew to nine centimeters. And then actually not that, not that long ago, it was 13 centimeters. 
So here it was nine centimeters and it was causing excruciating pain. And my doctor ended up coming in on her day off to do the surgery for me. It was done laparoscopically. We had to go out and get preemie stuff because going under anesthetics can induce preterm labor and I hate anesthetics. So I was not a happy camper, but I was in excruciating pain because my ovary and the cyst that were connected were twisting. So uh, she went in laparoscopically and drained the cyst to kind of make it so that it wasn't twisting anymore. And then actually before I got pregnant this time around, uh, back in December of 2022, I went for surgery to have that cyst removed. And it was all positive news because my, because the worry was that they would have to take out my ovary and the cyst, but actually they only were like, they only had to take out the, the cyst and I still have my left ovary intact. So positive news, but this was the surgery. And of course wanted to still document that because this was a significant, um, it was about a week and a half that I was on the couch permanently. And I, my last day, the pain started January 13th and then Hudson was born February 13th. So it was exactly a month to the day. And then here we get into, this was a photo shoot that we took just in his nursery. And I wanted to take a bunch of photos of just being super pregnant. And, oh, I thought I did. Oh, I haven't dated this one yet, but I do, I do stamp the dates. Because as you can see here, I've put, I've put the dates by each photo. So I'll still have to go through and do that. But as you can see, I kind of screwed up because in this photo, you can see this pattern coming through like my skin and stuff. So that's kind of funny, but that's okay. You still get the gist of it. And then this was his birth. This was him being born. And this was in labor, him first born. This is my first selfie with him. These are both of our first photos with him. And then he had to go right to the NICU, even though he was a very big baby. Well, he wasn't a very big baby. He was an average baby. He was seven pounds, 15 ounces. But because I went in with a fever and actually COVID was still, wasn't quite happening here yet, but we had a few cases in Canada. And because I entered the hospital with a fever, they were kind of like, you know, what's going on? And so... Um, actually I got to hold him for maybe five minutes and then they took him away from me for 24 hours because I couldn't see him until I was fever free for 24 hours. Luckily Hudson did not have a fever at all when he came out, which was very nice and, um, you know, made things a little easier, but, um, yeah, I couldn't see him for the first 24 hours. So only my husband was allowed to go see him. So that was hard, but obviously I didn't know any different. So I didn't quite really know the difference. Um, but it still sucked that I had to go 24 hours without seeing him. And then our hospital stay, again, I'll do some journaling to kind of, you know, journal. This was our first family photo. My first kind of photo, this was actually Valentine's day, um, because he was born on the 13th. The next day was the 14th. So that was a lot of fun. He was promoted from the, he was promoted from the like NICU box to just the bed. And then our family photo. And then he got a hospital sleeper. And then us in the morning after they just dropped him off and we're like, see ya here. They came in in the morning before we left and they're just like, here's your baby. See you later. <laughs> so, and then our, we took some just little photos of him in his little basket and then you know going home so then his going home outfit and then putting him in the car seat and stuff so again I'll do some journaling there these are our newborn photos again the same photographer that did my maternity photos did my newborn photos and we'll do the same thing this time around but these are my or Hudson's newborn photos I don't like how I look in any of these photos, but luckily I'm only in a couple. It's really more about Hudson, but it's still, even though you don't like how you look, I still think it's very important to still document because you're going to want to go back one day or your kids are going to want to go back one day and kind of see what you looked like. And it's only fair to have photos of yourself when you're constantly having photos of your kids. At least this is what I think anyways. And then, so here's where I've kind of not finished. Here's where I've kind of stopped. So my plan is I'll have 
February photos and just like an overview of the month of February, as well as here is his one week photos. And then we'll go into March and him and his one month photos, April two months, May three months, and so on. As you can understand, you know, it goes all the way on till six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then I'll do, you know, February and then his one year photos. And then the next page is going to be his first birthday. And from here, what I've decided, because there's still a lot of pages in this journal. So after his first birthday, I'm going to do February 2021 to February 2022. So he turns one, then this is his, you know, second year and then his second birthday party. And then going into his third year from February, 2022 to February, 2023. And then his third birthday. And then the following year. And then his fourth birthday and so on. And I actually did, I went through to kind of see how far I could get. And I think actually this page here, which is dotted on one side and blank on the other, this could potentially be his 10th birthday. And we'll see if we're still, if he still wants us involved with birthday parties. But anyways, this could be his 10th birthday. And I don't care that one side is blank and one side is dotted. I think it would be very cool to have this journal of his, you know, his first 10 years, which is freaking awesome. Like, I'm just thinking of it. And it's just like, you know, it's going to keep me busy for a while, but it's fun to kind of do again, like lots of work, as you can see, lots of work to be had in this journal. And there was just, like I said, I'm already six months pregnant and I wanted to have this done by three months so I could use this to announce to you guys. And it just, it just didn't happen. So again, you know, there's still lots to catch up on, but I can go out of order now that I know what each page is. So I can go ahead and do his birthdays first because, you know, I know what page they're going to be on. But yeah, so this is kind of what I've been working on and spending a lot of my time on. And oh yes, I promised to show you the journal that I will use for baby number two, which is also an Archer and Olive notebook. But this one I also got from a subscription box as well. I don't remember which subscription boxes, I'm very sorry. The only downfall, not downfall, but you know, the only kind of slight bummer that I have is this is a lined notebook instead of, I said that really weird. This is a lined notebook instead of a dotted journal, but that's okay because I still don't want to, you know, not use a journal because it's lined. Sorry, I'm trying to get this off. There we go. So this one's lined, as I mentioned, but this one is also 112 pages. And I actually went back and counted these because I wasn't quite sure how many was here, but there's also 112 pages here. So it's the exact same size. So yes, there be, there will be a few photos or a few photos. Sorry, another reminder, drink your water. There are definitely a few pages in here that will not need to happen for an example, you know, my first pregnancy will not be in here. Um, what was the other thing that wasn't gonna be in here? Gender reveal, we're not doing a gender reveal, but we did kind of a little gender reveal thing, which is the immediate family. So I guess that will kind of be there. Um, oh, our journey to you won't be here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm showing it on the side here, but my mistake. But yeah, there's a few pages in here that won't be in here. I mean, I can still do the I journey to you. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, maybe there'll be a few more in here that, you know, weren't in Hudson's journal, who knows. But for the most part, I know that there'll be enough room in here for 10 years, essentially, which again, like imagine once that's full, Oh, the satisfaction of a full journal for 10 years. Like it's just wild. Anyways, this one's lined, but it's still not bad. I've done journaling and stuff on a lined, on a lined notebook before, and I don't mind it. And honestly, I don't like, I love that it's the same size. I don't even know if they sell 
this size on their website even. So, and I knew I had two notebooks and I wanted to use them. So I think that it's going to be awesome to have these two as my like kid journals for my kids. And, you know, hopefully Archer and Olive will do a third if we decide to have a third kid so that we can, you know, keep it consistent. But like I said, this is what I've been working on. You'll slowly let me know if you want to see some, you know, plan with me videos or some, you know, memory keeping videos for this book uh, while I, you know, document this pregnancy and stuff. Let me know if you are interested in seeing that. And um, yeah, we're at the end of this video. So I want to thank you so much for watching and sticking around, even though I haven't been very active. I know I mentioned it in the last few videos, but I'm sorry. Uh, this month is different. I do have more videos on deck that I already have voiceovers for, so they will be posted shortly as well. And I'm going to work on my August plan with me. So, but yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the things. It means so much to me and helps this channel grow. And I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye.